Xiaomi recently launched not one but three budget Redmi smartphones. Today we'll be checking out the Redmi 6 Pro, which is supposed to be the most powerful phone in the series. It's also the first phone outside of the Note series to have this Pro moniker. Now this new model shares most of its core specifications with existing Xiaomi phones like the Redmi Y2 and even the Redmi Note 5, which makes us wonder, apart from the notch, does the Redmi 6 Pro bring anything really new to the table? Being the flagship phone in the new series, the Redmi 6 Pro gets a bit of a premium treatment in the form of a metal backplate. However, the overall design isn't too different from what we've already seen from Xiaomi around this price point. It's a fairly thick phone to hold and a bit hefty too, but it's manageable. You get a single tray which holds two SIM cards and a separate slot for a micro SD card. Now something worth noting is that the Redmi 6 Pro does not support dual 4G VO LTE, which means only one SIM can connect to a 4G network at a time. The placement of ports is good as the mono speaker grille is on the bottom right, so chances of blocking it when using the phone in landscape mode is slim. The headphone socket is placed on the top and you also get an infrared emitter, which can be used to control IR appliances through the Mi Remote app. Our test unit is the black variant, which has a matte finish, so it doesn't really pick up smudges very easily. The fingerprint sensor is easy to reach and is responsive for authentication. The main highlight is, of course, the 5.84-inch Full HD Plus display. The contrast and brightness levels are fairly adequate, and Xiaomi tells Gadgets360 that the display has a layer of toughened glass too, although they wouldn't really specify the vendor. The notch offers a bit more display area, but the bezels around the display are very thick. There's a fat chin at the bottom too, and a massive notch on the top, but Xiaomi thankfully gives you the option to hide it. For some reason, Xiaomi has found a really weird spot for the notification LED, which sits awkwardly in the bottom left portion of the chin. The phone uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 SoC, which is a couple of years old now, but is still a capable chip for general tasks. Gaming performance isn't great though, as some popular games like PUBG default to the lowest graphic settings, and even then, gameplay isn't the smoothest. The Redmi 6 Pro is available in two variants, one with 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, and another with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, which is the one we are testing. It features an FM radio too, but NFC is not present. Our unit is running on MIUI 9.6, based on Android 8.1 Oreo, with a slightly older July security patch. According to Xiaomi, all the Redmi 6 series will be eventually updated to MIUI 10. MIUI offers similar gestures and customizable functions that we've seen before. The leftmost screen gives you a card style layout for app shortcuts, stock prices, calendar events, etc. The Mi Store app gives you a curated list of apps and games from the Play Store, but it also sends annoying spammy notifications now and then, which we couldn't disable. The same goes for the Mi Community app, but at least this can be uninstalled. The phone comes with some pre installed apps for social, banking, video streaming, and a web browser. For navigating Android, you can either stick with the default 3-button system or switch to gestures. The gestures work quite well and we ended up using them a lot, but we did face one issue with a bad gesture in some apps which have a slide-out menu from the left or right, so you just end up closing it instead. Although Xiaomi has added the option to hide the notch, the system doesn't always scale well to the shrunken down aspect ratio. We noticed portions of some menu buttons and even content in some apps getting cut off due to the masking. Face unlock is present, which works well under most lighting conditions, except in pitch darkness. Despite having 4GB of RAM, we did notice that load times in games are a bit long and multitasking between apps isn't always stutter free. The display does have good touch response and colors are vivid and punchy, which makes it a good device for watching videos. Audio performance is good when using headphones, but the speaker doesn't get too loud for media playback. The stock music player has Hangama music integration, which lets you stream audio tracks. The default video player, on the other hand, curates trending music videos from YouTube in addition to showing you your local files. The vertically stacked rear camera has a 12 megapixel resolution and an f2.2 aperture with PDAF. Autofocus speeds are decently quick under good light. There's Auto HDR2, which does a good job of balancing the exposure. We observe good detail in landscape shots in daylight, and colors were pleasing too. The main sensor stumbles a bit in macros as it simply isn't able to resolve finer detail. 
The white balance also is a bit of a hit or miss in close-ups as we often found ourselves having to tap to focus to get the white balance back on track. Saving HDR images takes a good couple of seconds too, which makes it a bit more challenging to get a blur-free shots at night. In low light, autofocus speeds drop quite a bit and it takes longer to save regular images. It's best to leave HDR off as the time taken to save images increases even more. Details are quite mushy due to the noise reduction process and colors are a bit dull. The camera app is simple and easy to use with all the shooting modes just a swipe away. Portrait mode is present too thanks to the secondary 5 megapixel camera on the back. However, edge detection is quite average and you can't really adjust the level of blur before or after you've taken the shot. The 5 megapixel selfie camera shoots ok selfies under good light, but due to the lack of screen flash, low light images turn out grainy. Video performance is quite decent and the stabilization works well with no visible jelly effect around the edges of the frame. The maximum resolution you can shoot here is 1080p. Battery life is easily one of the strong suits of the Redmi 6 Pro. The 4000 mAh battery easily lasted us a full day and a bit more on a single charge. Now, playing heavy games doesn't drain the battery too much either. In a single round of PUBG where we survived till the very end, we recorded a drop of around 7% which is not too bad. In our internal video loop test, we got a runtime of 16 hours and 45 minutes which is very good. The phone doesn't support fast charging but the 10 watt adapter offers roughly a 55% charge in an hour and it takes around 2 hours and 35 minutes to completely charge it from zero. Looking at Xiaomi's current Redmi lineup, the Redmi 6 Pro doesn't make a very strong case for itself. There's nothing really terribly wrong with it, but at the same time, it doesn't really offer anything drastically new or different compared to the existing Redmi Note 5, which is a thousand rupees cheaper for the same amount of RAM and storage. You also have the Redmi Y2 at the exact same price as the Redmi 6 Pro, which has a better front camera, but of course you compromise a bit on the display resolution and battery capacity. What Xiaomi has essentially done here is create a bit of confusion in its own lineup. However, notches on Android phones seem to be a big demand these days, so we can see people picking this up just for that alone. However, if you don't really care about the notch, then the Asus Zenfone Max Pro M1 or even the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 would be much better buys at this price over the Redmi 6 Pro. So thanks for watching our review and for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.